Hello and welcome to a new episode on microscopy techniques. In this video, we'll discuss in detail about the handful of sectioning methods that can be employed for free hand section or section cutting of plant materials for microscopy. There are three most commonly used plant sections for microscopic studies in botany. Hold mount material, transverse section or TS material, and longitudinal section or LS material. Preparing a whole mount or WM material is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to isolate the part of interest and mount it on the slide for further observation and studies. So we'll not be covering this in more detail in this video. Transverse section, more commonly referred to by its abbreviation TS, is that plant section made by cutting through the plant material horizontally or at right angles to its longitudinal axis. Preparing a TS of a plant material, usually a plant stem, is probably the most common lab exercise done in botany practical classes when it comes to sectioning for microscopy. For dorsiventrally flattened plant materials such as leaves and liverwort thallus, the transverse section is technically a vertical transverse section, as the cutting plane is vertical and not horizontal. However, it's still loosely termed as TS for the sake of convenience. Longitudinal section or LS of a plant material is that section obtained by cutting through the material vertically or at right angles to the transverse axis of the material. In the case of materials with cylindrical or similar such forms, such as a plant stem, a cut made longitudinally right through the center of the material produces what is known as a radial longitudinal section or RLS. Sectioning made by passing the razor longitudinally through any plane other than through the center produces a tangential longitudinal section or TLS. Plant materials for sectioning can come in a variety of sizes and shapes. Generally, larger and more rigid fleshy materials such as young stems are easier to handle and section. Smaller size materials along with less rigid and flattened materials such as leaves require structural support during sectioning, which we will come to in detail a bit later. The most ideal instrument for sectioning is a sharp, straight out of the box, single use shaving blade, although a regularly sharpened and honed razor blade with a handle can also be used effectively. In this video, I'll discuss in detail the methods for sectioning easy to handle larger materials as well as tinier materials that require structural support in the form of a pith material for sectioning. I call this technique of section cutting a mid-air technique simply because the material is held with the hand in mid-air. For freehand section cutting in mid-air, hold the material firmly with the thumb and index finger of one hand at your eye level, such that roughly half a centimeter of the material protrudes from the fingers. Now, holding the razor in the dominant hand and positioning it horizontal to the material with the blade resting on the index finger and the thumb on top of the blade surface, make thin sections carefully but briskly with uniform horizontal side-to-side -side strokes, one section being produced per stroke. The direction of slicing may be towards or away from you as per one's convenience. Practice this exercise until you get the hang of the hand motion and are able to obtain as much thin and whole slices as possible. Collect the section stuck to the blade from time to time in a petri dish or watch glass filled with water. Out of every 10 to 20 sections you make, depending on the amount of practice and level of expertise, there is bound to be at least a couple of sufficiently thin and complete sections which you can select later for study. Thinner sections are relatively more transparent or less colored than the others and so can be easily distinguished. Discard the thicker and partially cut incomplete sections. When picking out the good sections for later study, always use a soft and narrow watercolor or paintbrush to remove the sections from the petri dish. Never use forceps or pins with sharp tips as they can inadvertently damage parts of the sections which will be very much evident under the microscope even if not visible right away with the unaided eyes. Once a few good sections have been picked up with the brush, transfer them to a clean glass light containing a drop of water or glycerin or an appropriate stain solution, ideally one section per slide. 
gently lower a covered glass using two forceps, taking care to avoid the introduction of any air bubbles in the water. For my videos on temporary and permanent slide making techniques, you can click on the links in the description below. When performing mid-air freehand sectioning, remember to wet the cut end of the material and the blade every now and then to minimize water loss and thereby wilting of the material, especially at the cut end during the exercise. Another way of section cutting, which I personally follow more often, is by immersing the material horizontally into a petri dish filled with water. Placing the material completely submerged by holding it firmly with one hand, cut sections with the other hand like so, under water. The direction of slicing is directed vertically downwards towards the base of the petri dish. With slow and steady cuts, you can easily obtain a couple of good sections out of every 5 to 10 slices you make. One advantage of the underwater petri dish method is that the plant material maintains its osmotic turgidity throughout the duration of the cutting, especially at the freshly cut end of the material. This makes the slicing much easier and produces clean cuts. For tiny materials that are close to impossible for sectioning using the previously described methods, a pith material is often employed to add size and thickness, if you will, to the material so that it becomes more convenient to handle. Some commonly used pith materials include carrot, potato tuber, cucumber, rubber or wooden corks, and even paraffin wax blocks. I'll be using potato tuber in this video. To use a pith material, all you need to do is to first make a square or preferably a cylindrical block by trimming the larger material to the required size relative to the size of the plant material to be sectioned. To make a cylindrical block, a cork borer of the right bore size comes in quite handy. Simply drill into the pith material all the way through and then pop out the cylindrical block thus formed from the inside of the borer. Trim both ends to get the required length of the pith block. Then make a clean cut right through the central axis of the block to obtain two longitudinal halves like so. Sandwich the plant material to be sectioned in between these halves and then proceed with the sectioning using either the mid-air or submerged petri dish freehand technique as previously discussed. If the material is thick enough that it occupies room in between the pith halves, then cut out tiny V-shaped dents of an appropriate size at the center of one or both halves, like so. The size of the dents should be such that the plant material to be sectioned fits tightly and not loosely in the dent space. Press the pith material firmly and proceed with the sectioning. For freehand sectioning of flaccid, dorsiventrally flattened structures such as leaf material, you can either press a single leaf in between the pith halves or fold the leaf several times and press the folds in between the pith halves and proceed with sectioning. One advantage of folding the leaf into many layers is that you get several sections with one single cut. For dorsiventrally flattened structures such as liverwort thallus, which is thicker than a typical leaf, you can still use a pith material to get good sections, although freehand sectioning without the use of a pith material is also possible, but requires extremely steady hands and keen attention during sectioning. Once you have the ideal sections ready, you can either make a temporary or a permanent slide mount of the sections. Do make sure to check out both my videos on how to prepare a temporary slide and a permanent slide by clicking on the links given in the description below. A more effective alternative to freehand sectioning is the use of a device known as a microtome. A typical benchtop laboratory microtome is highly sophisticated and accurate and can cut paper-thin slices of both plant and animal materials in terms of a few micrometers thick. However, benchtop microtome assisted sectioning requires the sample to be subjected to numerous processing steps prior to sectioning and is mostly employed for making thin sections for permanent slide preparations. So for sectioning of plant materials for temporary or permanent slide preparations, a cheap, portable, less sophisticated and easy to use microtome known as the hand microtome comes in quite handy. Although it requires a bit of practice to achieve thin and uniform sections, 
the hand microtome is an ideal tool for the botanist for quick, time-saving and less laborious section cutting of plant materials, although it's not very effective for sectioning of animal tissues. I have discussed in detail in a separate video on how to use the hand microtome along with a couple of different variations and techniques that can be incorporated to the use of this handheld device as per one's convenience and taste. You can click on the link given at the top right corner of the screen or the link in the description below to watch that video. So this was all about the techniques of freehand sectioning plant materials for microscopic studies. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If so, make sure to support what I'm doing by subscribing to my channel and clicking on notifications to get notified of upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.